Join me and my guest, Professor Mike Keene from the IU Center for a Sustainable Future as we discuss Diet for a Hot Planet by Anna Lapp. We'll make some moosewood favorites while discussing all things green on Dinner and a Book. Dinner and a Book is made possible by a generous grant from the Rex and Alice A. Martin Foundation. While you may not think global warming when you sit down to dinner, our tangled web of global food is connected to almost one-third of total greenhouse gas emissions. Livestock alone is associated with more emissions than all of the world's transportation combined. Today we'll use some local foods as Mike Keene and I talk about the climate crisis. Mike, I think this, bo this book is just amazing. You know, I, we've, we've always heard about the danger of the gas from the, you know, the energy and the cars. And this book reveals that food production is almost, well, is even more harming to the climate. What is Analap telling us? I think Anna is giving us some good news and some bad news. The bad news is that our food system, in particular our industrial food system, is threatening both our health and our planet. The good news is that every single day, every one of us from age 2 to 99 has three times a day at the end of our fork to make a difference, to help save the planet and our own health, and that's what we're going to help people figure out today. That is so well said, Mike. You know. There is a lot of great information in this book and you find yourself making lists and, and thinking about uh, the concepts and what the future lies. We want to talk about a lot of more things too about, about how you, we teach our children these, these new ideas and we take part in their activities. But I think the activity we should get started on is some food preparation. And I'm going to be making a soup from the uh, Moosewood cookbook. It came out about 15 years ago using all things fresh. And I'm going to make a soup out of carrots and squash. I really wanted to do parsnips, but it's not quite the right season for parsnips. Tell me what you're going to be doing. Well, what I've done is I've, I've gone to a local co-op, the farmer's market in my own backyard, picked up some food, and I'm going to build an appetizer, a salad, a dessert, and a cheese course around uh, what you're preparing. And I'm just going to start by uh, getting a couple of uh, beef brats into the oven. These were made by somebody called the Family Farms Co-op on grass-fed beef right here, uh, just a few miles from where we're at. Well, you know, we're going to learn more too today about our local markets and how you can find them, where they are, when they're open. Because sometimes people say, well, I can't go to this. I, I, you know, I'm working or I don't have enough hours in the day. Mike knows exactly where everything is and is going to help us with this. But, you know, getting back to the book, Mike, uh, this is, well, I, I think it was a great book. And as a matter of fact, she's been compared to Rachel Carson and the impact she's going to have. What do you think about the book in that kind of category? Well, I think this is probably one of the best five books in sustainability that's been written in the last decade. Um, I think she really makes the connection between our food systems um, and our planet uh, and our health in ways that uh, we sort of have, have lost track of. Uh, so um, I think it's just a, a book that everybody ought to read. Well, well written, too. It is very well written, and I know this is a subject close to your heart. You're very involved with it. And um, we've talked about the changes that have taken place in our society. You know, some of us grew up with parents that were already green. And then the world changed after World War II, and it became living better with chemistry. And now everybody's kind of thinking, let's go back to some really good ideas. I, um, you're, you've got your bread ready. What's yeah, the next well, thing you're going to uh, be doing? Actually, I'm going to make a cheese course. Um, uh, interestingly enough, uh, the cheese course is the first thing you make, but the last thing you eat. And that's because you want your cheese to sort of warm up a little bit. Now tell me where you found your cheese. Uh, this cheese is made in Benton Harbor by Remy Picot. You can actually pick it up at Martin's. Uh, 
and uh, uh, made just 30 miles away uh, from milk uh, that they get uh, from uh, the local area. Do all the Martins have all these ingredients, or do you find several or some that have Well, Martins more? carries a few local ingredients, and they carry a few local cheeses, but quite frankly, if you want the fresh best stuff, what you need to do is get out to the farmer's markets and some of our local co-ops, where there you're not buying it from a store, but you're buying it directly from the producer. You can talk to them, uh, you can ask them what they did, how they make it. You get to know them. They become your friends and it becomes an adventure and a daily or maybe a weekly activity. Um, I'm adding some coriander and some uh, cayenne peppers, cinnamon, what do I have here, turmeric. I'm going to add that to the onions and garlic and um, ginger. I had some fresh ginger. I'm going to grind some cinnamon here and add the cumin and we're going to add this to our soup pot and add some, oh, sometimes those herbs really pop, don't they? Yeah, they you smell could, wonderful. Oh, I can find mm. my, I find myself inhaling. So we're going to cook these a few minutes and then I will add in another bowl here, I've got some um, pear juice or apple juice, have vegetable stock and some water. We're going to cook the carrots and the squash in that and then we will take it to the blender, add some uh, salt and pepper and orange juice as we blend the soup and then we can either serve it cool or well, cold I would say or warm. So I'm gonna start on a salad. This is just a, a, a simple salad um, made with uh, bitter field greens um, and I'm going to put a little of uh, 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 a heirloom tomato, uh, cut that up and then I'm going to finish by adding um, a little bit of shredded uh, yellow beet uh, in some tarragon. You know, I, you almost get really nervous and scared when you're reading this book. It, it, it sounds as, as if everything that's being produced is a bit, bit dangerous. I mean, it's just adding to a very, very, um, what should we say, climate crisis situation. Tell us about how she brings in our attention to the agribusiness and how companies are dealing with these changes and suggestions? Well, I think what she first points out is that we've moved from a, a food system that was based on a lot of producers, the family farmer, the, you know, the sort of iconic American family farmer, um, and has now become uh, produced by large industrialized businesses and, and, and factory farms. And in order to produce that way, you have to sort of really uh, use uh, large machines. Um, uh, you have to use a lot of pesticides. Uh, that's what they've been using so they can have uh, yes. relatively um, high yields. All of this stuff is, is, is very highly petroleum based. Uh, both the gasoline that goes into the uh, uh, machinery as well as the chemicals that go into the fertilizer. All of this is putting carbon into the atmosphere, it's laying nitrogen into the atmosphere, it's putting pesticides into our waters. This is not the way our family farmers used to farm. Uh, well, and they're being squeezed out too. You know, there's this huge companies coming in, taking over. And I like the way she suggested how we should go back to this small farming concept and use some of the old-fashioned techniques of growing multiple uh, vegetables or, or products in the same field and letting nature take its course in enriching the soil because the, so the soil, the earth is being depleted of its nutrients and if we would use, we would use sort of traditional farming techniques, we would have a better soil, we'd have yes. richer soil. It's ironic, but um, our current um, food production is largely based on science. And what we forgot is that maybe nature is a better teacher um, than science. And that's what um, a lot of uh, 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 sort of people are learning, the farmers, uh, the family farmers who have stuck around. But uh, there is a, a migration of a whole new group of farmers going back to the land or people who grew up uh, in farm families wanting to hang on to their farms and rather than sort of going to work for the larger companies they're trying to make their connections directly from us so that the ingredients I'm putting into my salad right now um, this bitter greens uh, and the tomatoes um, I bought these directly from the person who produced them I, I picked them up last night um, at a local uh, co-op called the Purple Porch Co-op uh, and yes, this it sounds like a one-stop co-op you can get a lot of things didn't you say your bread came from the I got the bread the there I got the brats there I've got uh, several of my vegetables 
Uh, on the way in uh, for the show, I stopped at the farmer's market, South Bend Farmer's Market, and I um, picked up this uh, yellow beet here that I'm gonna shred uh, and put on. And you one of the things- You literally practice what you teach, right? Yeah. Well, you I mean, do. first of all, I just love to cook, and I love, I love to cook food that tastes good. And the best thing to do, I think, is to be as simple as you can. Uh, Before you do any more, tell me about uh, field greens, because I had a recipe once that called for them, and somebody said, well, what are they exactly? Well, it's just a mixture of different greens. Usually we're used to seeing just the iceberg lettuce. That's the other thing about this new farming. Or the mixed uh, greens, you yes. know, the darker greens. Yes, and so this is basically mixed darker greens. We've got some uh, 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 oak leaf here. We've got some arugula. We've got some uh, dandelion greens. Uh, uh, that's all mixed up. And when you uh, put that together and add a little bit of uh, What's this beet, yellow? That's yellow beet. It's yellow got a beet. wonderful sweet flavor. There's nothing like a little bit of anise flavor uh, with your uh, beet. And so I've got a little bit of tarragon here. Um, right from your garden, I uh, take Yeah, it. I just picked it out my back door right. this morning, you know, from our little kitchen garden. Uh, and beautiful. right there is just a beautiful, easy to prepare salad. Your kids can do it with you taste delicious and kids can't wait and I'd like to play with their food they can play with it by making it absolutely and then eat it afterwards. it's great and I don't think many children have had yellow turnips I think that would be wonderful and you have to introduce your children to these ideas early on um, I wanted to mention now this soup is going to cook a while we're going to let it cook and cook and cook um, and um, I wanted to mention uh, we, we have a lot of people give a, give a little pushback. Oh, I don't have time for this. I have children. We're driving. We we're spend two hours a day commuting, and that's a choice we hope that people can change. But what do, how, what do we say to parents who say they're too busy, they have to take care of their children? How can they confront this and, and adapt to it? Well, it seems to me that, you know, what was eating? Eating was the thing that brought our families and communities together. And that's the one thing we've lost in this busy world. So what I say is reclaim a little bit of your family time by integrating into it. Take your kids on the weekend uh, to uh, go up to Tremendous Fruit Farm where I went up and picked up these apricots. There was all kinds of families up there. Take the kids it was on, on a, a Saturday weekend. morning. Right, on a uh, Saturday. Go up and do it with yeah, them. Don't or, send them just with the school outing. Go. Go to the farmer's market yes. and let them pick out a few food so that actually you can recapture some of the time by uh, procuring your food, maybe helping grow a little bit in the backyard, uh, right. and then having the kids help make the dinner. Well, and I think that's a key. I think parents think they're so busy they have to do the shopping, let dad watch, the kids' mom will run over. But take them along. I have seen this work, and I've seen it as an activity in a, in a fr uh, parent my grandchildren love to cook. They love to go out and pick vegetables. They love to grow vegetables. They grow uh, in the backyard with their father, and they have a marvelous time. It takes a little longer sometimes, but they really learn. And, and, and we couldn't be in a better area. This, this area produces 70% of the variety of fruit and uh, vegetables in the whole country. Plus, we in, live in wine country, and I think we ought to try a little bit of this. I this think is a, that's the best suggestion. This is a Tabor Hill Chardonnay, but I also have some wine from uh, Round Barn, the Fen Valley up by Saugatuck, and there's Lemon Creek and Domain Berrien, all within 28 miles. And they're producing wines that are as good as the best wines that you can get from California, and right here within 30 minutes. Say, and how are your brats doing? Uh, I think my brats are going to take about another, another 10 minutes or so, and then uh, I'll be able to use those to uh, assemble my little, uh, I'm going to make little skewers with the brats and add a little bit of apricot and uh, basil and a few other things. Amazing what he does with a brat. Let's do a little toast to sustainability. A future, a sustainability for the future. Tell me that. Sustainable future and also to sustain our health. Absolutely, and that's what we're here to do today. And I'm, I'm just going to be cooking this this uh, soup for a while before I puree it. Mike, you also mentioned that there's a magazine now coming out in Michiana, uh, and I'm going to look at, look at this one. It's, it has um, menus in it, it has great ideas. Tell us about Edible Michiana. Edible Michiana. The edible uh, magazines are around the country. I first saw this three years ago, ago in Brooklyn. I saw it 18 months ago in uh, Chicago, and I thought, we need to get it here. And just last